shed guy looking at 5C spindle nose collets. The 5C collet, it's got the drawbar going through the headstock. A limited range of grip, like about half a millimetre. As the hand wheel tightens up, it pulls on the drawbar and locks it up. So the hand wheel's spinning. There's a spindle spinning and there's a bearing in here, a thrust bearing, so that when you close it, there's no resistance to pulling the collet into the nose piece. So there's your collet. And there's your drawbar. We'll have a look at the uh, drawbar just on the bench. These are your 5C collets that fit into that draw bar. You've got some are threaded externally and internally, some are smooth internally. So there's your smooth internal. If you want to stop the work from going too far in and want to set it so that each piece of work sets the same length each time, then you use a stop and with the smooth bore you're going to use this hard inch stop which comes, well it does, I've just fiddled a few different stops that fit up inside so for instance that'll screw in to half inch 20 UNF thread nip it off on there That goes in your bore. That one's got the nick out of it. And uh, boom, you've set your stop. And by screwing that further in or screwing it further out, you can adjust exactly where the, uh, where the stop's sitting. So that's that type of stop where the inside of the collet's got a thread in it then this is a bought stop it's an edge technologies and this screws in and then you've got a variety of different size rods that'll fit the different sizes of collets so we've got the stops sorted There's your drawbar, threaded section at this end, all hardened. And then the clamping part at this end, so we're solid there. And as you clamping on, it can rotate, rotate, and then it locks, and this whole unit locks to the uh, spindle you could make this from a piece of tubing good tubing yeah we're about one three seven fifty there roughly that's just giving me one three seventy five so inch and three eighths outside uh, sort of nominal type diameter. I'll just reach in with a snap gauge and uh, take the main internal bore diameter there. Just over 1.1. So about 1.100. Somewhere around there. But that's quite accurate tubing. The, the far end you get a wider part where it sits inside the uh, the spindle and accurately locates so that would match to your the bore of your spindle you know that's 1502 1503 something like that okay 
Right, so we'll just see what's going on in here. Take the scrub screw out. You'd have little grub screws that are 3 sixteenths 32, so it's 3 sixteenths BSF. This is probably going to need quite a lot of a clean. Mm -hmm. yeah, grub screw number two. I've got my towel here, so if it does all go horrible, I'll catch all the parts. Okay, so that ring lifts off. Nothing too much has fallen out yet, so that's just a solid part. It locates quite tightly in there. I'll just clean all of this, but it's probably going to be about 3750 that. And you need and this is held on with a circlip, this little unit here, so let's see what happens with that. Alright, well that's giving me a tough time. Let's see if I can uh, bring ah All right, got it. Ah, oh, that's a tight circlip. There goes the circlip. We're out. There you go. I've got a ball of ice sitting in there. It's a three part thrust bearing. But basically, that's inch and a half. Two, three hundred. Now there's the inner ring. Inch and a half, two, three hundred, half inch depth. So we'll give that all a wash. I'm not going to measure all these parts, but this is all going to be hard and stuff. All I'm going to do is clean it and reassemble it. We'll just check this end here in a minute. So there's your bearing. It's, uh, it says FT a half, R&M, 4397, made in England. The little balls are held in a bronze race. They've been centre pumped in on that side and then when you flick it, Alternate ones centre popped on that side, so just to keep them captive, just to hold them. So we've uh, tapped the hand wheel off. It's just a nicely made, accurately bored piece of aluminium that goes tight over this boss on yon end of the tube. Uh, about one six two fifty, something like that. Sorry, one six twenty five. All feels nice and smooth and crisp. I'll probably oh, there's a little key in there and one six twenty five. 
Well, that's a, a quarter inch key, isn't it? 250. It, this wasn't a press fit, but it's just a nice, tight, snug fit. I'll put a little bit of... I'll put copper slip elsewhere, but I'll put a little bit of standard grease on there. Just thinking about it, if you're going to make one of these, basically, this rides inside the the bore of the headstock. So that needs to be correct. Diameter of the tube and the internal diameter needs to be correct because you've got to thread it out at this end. And then the next bit is the overall length. So, to this first boss, 19 and 11 sixteenths to where the bearing starts to run 21 and a quarter this is your snap ring groove here so it's the thickness of a snap ring groove and then to where your hand wheel sits 21 and 13 sixteenths to overall length is 22 and 3 quarter inches this is quite a lot of work at this end And it's probably one of these deceptively accurate bits of kit. So I'll put this back together. This aluminium, by the way, gave it a little rub with the um, Scotch Bright Black, but it's a bit rough on that aluminium. So I just did it with autosol and a paper tissue. This is quite a go so uh, we've got a picture of what we should be looking at here now basically I just wanted to check I'm putting this back together the right way someone's been in it before and so it could have been the wrong way around so there's this ring here which sits that way around in goes bottom half of your thrust washer I'll copper slip that okay and in goes the top half of the thrust washer I deburred this piece on the outside, I deburred it on the inside as well. There's a few little dings just with a stone. That's how that sits. And then it shows this sitting down the shaft. So there you go. And that's, there's no slop on there. That sits in tight, but of course, when it there's just a little bit of give on that bearing, so when it takes up, on there, it's solid. Yeah, that's sat down fully. So now in goes my snap ring, and. It, And I'm thinking it'll go on more easily than it came off. Watch your fingers. I just tap that down with a little bit of aluminium. That's engaged, that's in. Yeah. Right, we're going to get that uh, boss back on, but these, these grub screws are a bit gnarly, so we're going to smooth those off, finish them up in the lathe so they don't chew the thing up again. 
so I'll just run these holes out with a tap bit of stuff in there so the critical part of the whole thing is where that bearing how that bearing sits so if you're making one of these start with the bearing work your way out from there well we're back we've just uh, fiddled around with those grub screws a little bit just so they're nice and neat I'll work a bit of uh, copper slip in there and this ring is here and has full engagement So this shoulder with this flat, with that sitting up correctly, this, not all of this ring disappears. And this inner allowance is for the circlip. So the circlip sits in that one. This face sits up to this face but it doesn't go all the way. Right, okay, fair enough. Right, what I'll do is I'll put some spacers up underneath so that I know in my mind that's dropped down as far as it possibly can. Right, I've uh, used a variety of feeler gauges. Jack that boss up, there's no movement on it. So when this bad boy, when this boss plonks down this ring, ain't going nowhere we know we've got it right so I know that's down and because I know it's down I'm going to tighten it up so the give the play there was uh, 0.105 I think that's millimeters yeah so they're they're metric feeler gauges so that's uh, 0.105 actually it was a little bit slack before but that's really feels nice it would take some making it's not a bad service job. If you're going to, if, if you haven't got one of these, then buy a random one from eBay and see if you can uh, see if you can modify it. I've been having a good look down the bore. There's a a mark here but I think that's just a score on the surface of it I do think I, I don't think that's been brazed on or anything I think that's actually all one piece right we're done I'm out I hope that helps anyone who's uh, got drill bar issues shed guy says thank you